pronouns do use. Are we swearing? Welcome to the Wine Down. WPG Magazine presents the Wine Down featuring our sommelier, our wine expert, Alex Allardyce. I am Mark Adam, and I'm going to be learning a lot, <laughs> as I hope you are uh, at, at home as well. So, Alex, welcome. Uh, Thank you. We're probably going to have to take the masks off. Yep. Yeah? My glasses are fogging up already. <laughs> okay, <laughs> fair enough. Yes, so safety first, obviously, yes. We want to, in the stupid, mm -hmm. stupid COVID times, mm -hmm. you've got to keep your poop in a group. Uh, so, what are we, uh, what are we doing? We're talking wine. We are talking wine. So, I think generally what we're going to be doing is uh, tasting different kinds of wine over, hopefully, many episodes of uh, yeah. this uh, series. Yeah. Uh, so, we started with a white wine, and yeah, I think we'll just get right into it. So, wine, the, the basics of wine, what makes wine different than other liquors? It's made with grapes. Grapes. That's the grape, basic. Grape based. <laughs> yes. But, but so is grappa, isn't it? Yeah, actually, yeah, that's true. And, yeah. yeah, and cognac yeah. and yeah. So, so wine is a very specific thing, and it's what what makes it wine. So basically, wine one hundred and one. You take grapes, you add yeast, which is there's kind of yeast everywhere in the world. You can never see it, but in the vineyards, for example, there's yeast all over the place. So that yeast, once you crush the grapes, the yeast eats the sugar, and the yeast turns the sugar into alcohol. Ooh, that's my favorite. That's yeah, that's the fun yeah. part. Yeah. So that's basically what's happening when you ever if you look at big barrels fermenting. That's what we call fermentation is literally that process. So that's generally what's happening. And if you've ever seen a big barrel full of grapes that are fermenting, and when I say fermentation, that's literally the process of yeast, sugar, and alcohol. So that's what's going on in that barrel. But yeah, so like when you leave grapes in the fridge too long, you could end up with wine by accident? Literally, yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, good. that's exactly what's happening. Okay, good. Um, and good obviously there's lots of different kinds of wine, as I'm sure you know. You're a beginner, mm -hmm. but you're not that much of a beginner. I'm not, I'm, <laughs> you're, you're aware. <laughs> I'm not a complete noob. I'm yes. just, I'm asking for those that are watching from home who are more newbie than I am. Because right. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good when it comes to liquors and alcohols and all that, but wine is probably my weakest of the alcohol world. Right. So. Right. So yeah, so there's different like kinds of wine. There's obviously white, red, rosé, and even within white, there is so many different styles and I for me that's what's so fascinating about wine is you can say like oh I'm a white drinker what does that mean there's so many different styles <laughs> yeah. and so I think that's kind of what we want to do here right is just I can kind of show you how to taste very kind of boring we can go through the structure but sometimes it's good to learn those basics I think that's important I, I like yeah. the process of tasting and, and learning more tips and tricks on how to like get more of the flavor out of it exactly like to sort of identify what's happening there so yeah. Well, yeah, because like when you break it down into the basics, that's when you can kind of pinpoint, like, oh, that's what I like about that wine, or that's what mm -hmm. I don't like about this one, or, right. yeah, you just get better at drinking, which is... I was pretty good at it before. <laughs> <laughs> She's just asked my mom. She thinks it's problematic. Yeah. But let's move on. Uh, okay. So what are we drinking? So wine number one, episode number one, we have the uh, Decibel Sauvignon Blanc from New Zealand. Okay. So I think... Uh, wait, wait, wait. Grassy? Yes. Yeah? That, that's all I remember. That's not bad. That's good. That's good. <laughs> Sauvignon Blanc from New Zealand. Yes. So this is Grass. a good wine to start with because New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc is very, like, in your face. Like, and once we get in the glass, you can see. But if you're smelling New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc and you're not getting much, like, go to a doctor. Like, there's something wrong with you. Like, okay. like it's very okay. easy to, like, yeah. kind of pick out. So it's a good beginner tasting wine, basically. Okay, good. Um, so I was going to show how to open a wine properly, but this is a screw cap, so... Uh, proper name for the screw cap? Stelvin? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that, see, I'm quizzing you now. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. Keep uh, my pin for another day. So yeah. always says that, I forgot to. Oh, Stelvin. That's fun. I like that. Uh, and Stelvin caps are... They're, they're, a lot of people look down on Stelvin caps, like the twist-offs. Right. Because of, oh, screw cap wine. Yeah. No, that's not really a thing at all, especially like in New Zealand with New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc, most, I think, I should know the number and I don't, but like a very, very large majority of New Zealand wine producers use screw cap, even for their Pinot Noirs, even for their red wines. Mm -hmm. Like that's what they do there. 
And it, it makes sense. Is there an advantage or disadvantage to well, that particular type of... There is, actually. Like, if you use a cork, you get a bit of oxygen into the wine, which sometimes you want. So if you're aging wine or something, that actually is good. Okay. But the screw cap, it doesn't let any oxygen in, which can also be good because then you're getting in faults. And it's, like, really, when you think about producers in like Burgundy and Bordeaux, like these wines are their babies. Like it's their blood, sweat and tears that go in. They put a cork in it. The cork gives the wine TCA, which is a fault. And it's like a $300 bottle and it's dead. You can't mm. drink it. Mm. Which Where, which we've had happen. Yeah, and it's devastating. If you, like, yeah. you've been sitting on a bottle for years, it means something to you. You open it up and then it's, no, nah, it's undrinkable. It's yeah. yeah. So that's why a lot of producers are actually going to screw cap because it's kind of foolproof. Like nothing's gonna happen to that wine. Once you put the screw cap on, yeah, any faults that were in the wine before are right. going to be there, yeah. but like if the batch comes out nice, yeah. you're you're getting everyone's getting the same wine. Yeah, so okay. it's really yeah, like I think maybe a while ago, like before I was even into wine, like yeah, a lot of <laughs> wines do use. Are we swearing? Is that a thing? I can believe it. Okay. Sorry if anyone didn't like. To swear. <laughs> I'm probably gonna swear. That's just what's happening yeah. here. It's, it's an alcohol-based podcast. Or That's fine. Webcast. Yeah. Webcast. So that's uh, that's Stelvin screw cap. Um, are we ready to taste some wine? I've been looking at the wine. I've just been staring <laughs> at it. Yeah. Um, okay. So I think generally what we're gonna do, I'll like kind of show you how I was taught to taste when I was studying. Right. And then whatever cut me off if I get boring or yeah. yeah I mean it's episode one, so mm-hmm. maybe like a, a real how to taste is in order, and then sure. we can just sort of remind you next time, real quick. Like it'll be fine. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. Because uh, I don't want to talk too much and bore everybody but so so generally like when we're tasting wine we look at the appearance mm-hmm. the nose which mm-hmm. is the smell mm-hmm. and then on the palate Pace. and then you make some final conclusions so, based on that color smell and taste. then on, yeah exactly so those three things so first we're going to look at the wine so we literally look at the it's the color so actually no i'm rusty already the first thing is the clarity <laughs> yeah that's funny to my exam a month ago i don't remember things already so we're looking into the wine is clear and otherwise like if the wine hasn't been filtered or there's something kind of weird going on in the wine it might look hazy mm-hmm. so that's where we would kind of assess that but I'm, that looks pretty clear right you can see right through it yeah it's very clear and then uh yeah we look at the color so very pale yellow yeah yeah so the co- yeah we kind of go like yeah like yellow gold like yeah. pale lemon i would probably say this is lemon that that would be a good way to describe that color yeah and just we in also, case you can't see yeah and I just realized I'm going to have to relearn how to like talk. So I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself already. So I said pale lemon. We also look at the intensity. So I would say the intensity is pale. Absolutely. Okay. So I went pale yellow. So what I would say right, is so you, yeah, it's you're yellowy. Me, yeah. It's yellowy and also a pale but version pale, of said yeah. yellow. Okay. Because yeah. if we're talking about like Chardonnay for any Chardonnay lovers out there, uh, you'll know Chardonnay is very, it's a deeper kind of yellow color. So that has like a more, like it wouldn't be pale intensity. Like, like a, yeah, like a medium, butter yellow. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of deeper looking. So mm-hmm. yeah, so right away on the um, appearance, I would say, yeah, like clear pale lemon. Okay. Uh, and then on the nose, so right away, you'll notice we are swirling. You get a lot of people <laughs> doing this and they're like, look at the legs. What does that mean? That's kind of a thing. That, I kind of skipped over that in the appearance. You can also talk about the viscosity, most wines have a medium viscosity, and that just means, yeah, like when you swirl it, is it, yeah, is, can you see the wine kind of clinging to the wine glass? That's the viscosity. So oh, okay. technically, so legs, again, when you see kind of dribbling down, that's the same thing. Technically, that has to do with, um, like, if there's higher alcohol wine, Ooh. I don't, I'm not a scientist, so I don't really know the right words. I should know them probably, but it, it has to do with like the suspended particles, I think you would say in the wine. So yeah, higher alcohol will kind of allow it to drip down the glass more higher sugar as well. Like all those like particles kind of clean. And higher glass. sugar generally also means higher alcohol or uh, no? No, not necessarily. No? That's if you like fortify it or something, not necessarily, oh, okay. but, um, Hey, we should taste a port or something. Sometime. Ooh, that would be a good idea. Next episode. Just kidding. But we should do that soon. That'd be fun. Well, we'll put it on the list. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Um, but honestly, so I say like, that's why I say technically that's what the viscosity is, but honestly, more often than not, it has to do more with the cleanliness of your glasses. Cause if, again, if there's particles on the inside of your glass, yeah, so like if you can see, if there's then that, like that's there. what it's cleaning and, and not even like your glasses are dirty, but just if there's kind of dust particles or something, that's going to. Yeah. I mean, there's dust so. in the air, right? So like it gets on the glasses, uh, glasses can be clean and still have soap residue. That's exactly. one thing I know from, 
from like pouring beer when you get too much yeah. head usually it's like soap particles right. and so that's and the same thing you can't necessarily judge like the beer or the wine based on that it's like well no it's just the glass yeah so i don't even really look at the legs like whenever someone's like oh legs I'm like, no. okay. yeah don't, I think don't care people like, my wine has legs for days yeah well, okay fair enough simmer down yeah. But yeah, so then on the nose, oh right, so we're swirling. And oh, swirling. Do you know why we swirl wine? To put oxygen in it. There you go. What does the that. oxygen do? Uh, it lets the flavor out. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So it's kind of funny, it's like I make fun of people that look at legs, but then like people make fun of others that like swirl the wine. I'm like, no, 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 that actually does something. Like, no, you, you want to swirl. You're not like being pretentious if you're in a restaurant swirling. Like, don't be ashamed. Yeah, you're because <laughs> like when, when you pour a really nice wine, you're supposed to put it into a decanter. Yeah. So that it gets that air in it. Yeah. While you're waiting, like while you're having a glass, the rest of the wine is decanting and get more flavors coming exactly. out of it. Exactly. So this is just like a little mini decant. You're just like letting oxygen in. Oh, it's like manual decanting. Yeah. And it's funny, when I first started like tasting wine a lot in school, I would, I just got so used to swirling. I would like get my coffee in the morning and just like swirl my coffee. And I'm like, oh my God, what am I doing? I'm an idiot. I'm just, I was so used to like, I was conditioning myself to swirl. I didn't even notice I was doing it, but uh, so yeah, let's, let's sniff. Ooh. Right? New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. Am I right? <laughs> that's, that's an easy one. Yeah. But, okay, so on the nose then, the first thing we talk about right away, before we even think about what we're smelling, it's how oh, much are we smelling. Yeah. So it's, it's and the, it's a lot. Actually, okay, so back up. The first thing we think about, similar to is it hazy or clear, is it clean? Does it smell, does it smell clean? Like there's no faults? It smells really nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So then I would say this wine is clean on the nose. Okay. And then we talk about the intensity. So... Like, really, like, I can smell the wine from here. I don't even have to get my nose in the glass. I would say this is pronounced intensity. You know what I mean? Like, like you can smell it. Like, it's lifting out of the glass, all of the aromas. Do you find that? Like, right here, you can smell it. Yeah. Where it's, like, Pinot Grigio, so I'm just like... You have to get right in yeah. there. Yeah. Like, so that would be, like, lower intensity. I... This smells really nice. Yeah. Can we taste so it now? No. Can, can I drink it? No. Oh. We got to talk about what we're smelling. <laughs> oh, right. We skipped that part. I'm right. very excited about yeah. this series, by the way. Uh, yeah. So, so what do you smell? You said grass before we... I assumed... Yeah. Because that's, but you get that? that's a quality... I do a bit. I get yeah, a little bit like fresh cut grass. Yeah. And then what kind of like fruits? Like... Kind of like a pear? Yeah. A little bit of like lemon lime. A pro a tip. Little, a little bit of citrus? Yes, exactly. So a pro tip is whenever you're tasting white wine, generally it always has lemon or lime in it. Or green apple is another one. Basically any white wine will have those descriptors. It's kind of foolproof. So if you ever don't know what to say, be like, definitely lemon. <laughs> and you're going to nail it every time. You're never going to be wrong, really. <laughs> Fair. Fair. Um, yeah, I'm getting a little bit of pear, a little yeah. bit of, a little bit of this citrus. this more like kind of tropical. Whenever I think of how to assess like what fruits I'm getting in the wine for white wines there's a spectrum so one end of the spectrum you do have that lemon lime green apple in the middle you have more like a little bit riper fruit so more stone fruit like peach pear and then if you go to the far end of the spectrum you get tropical fruit so like guava Mango. pineapple exactly so where would you put this wine um I, I'm getting pear. pear for sure so we're at least kind of maybe, in the maybe like it is a bit tropical. Oh, it has a little, like, is that, like, like, apricot-y? Yeah. I get a little bit of, like, yeah, like, even, yeah, like, passion fruit, something like that. Ooh. Yeah. Well, what's interesting about this yeah. wine, I didn't even talk about it. So this is New Zealand. This is actually from Hawke's Bay. So most of the New Zealand Sauvignon Blancs we know, um, people who drink, like, Kim Crawford, all of the big names, most of it's from uh, Marlborough, New Zealand. That's infamous Sauvignon Blanc is from there. So this is Hawks Bay. This is a bit different. There's a few wines in our market that are from Hawks Bay as well. Um, so if you think of New Zealand, anyone who's into geography, <laughs> there's the South Island and the North Island. So South Island is where Mar Marlborough is, mm -hmm. and it's cooler because it's farther away from the equator. So New Zealand Sauvignon Blancs from there are going to be more on the citrusy end a bit, whereas Hawks Bay is further north, meaning it's closer to the equator, so it's warmer. So those Sauvignon Blancs tend to be actually a bit riper, which I get in here. Like, it's not quite as, like, linear and, like, austere as some Sauvignon Blancs you'll get. Like, it's, it smells quite, like, soft and ripe. And... It does. Okay, we can drink now. Yeah! I see you're glazing over. You're like, just let me drink! <laughs> also, we have oh, spittoons here. Nice. 
I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna use mine. At least for the first sip, or I don't know. We'll see. Don't judge us if we stop using the spittoons over the course of the series. <laughs> Adam's not gonna use his. <laughs> you gave me a nice Batman spittoon though. I do I, I do like that. <laughs> yeah, it's my uh protein shaker. And then I have a, a cocktail shaker from Hennessy that I'm using. That's nice. I like that. So I just I want you know I wanted something see through because if I'm gonna be spitting into it, I don't yeah. want to. You guys don't have to look at TV. Yeah, no. Uh, okay, so we're gonna drink now. So, but so remember when we're tasting wine, when you take a sip, remember to swish it all over your palate, like just really like swirl around in your mouth. When you hear wine nerds like sucking in wine, like you know that noise they make, like again. That's similar to swirling. swirling. You're sucking in oxygen just to help aerate the wine in your mouth, and then you can taste it more. And it sounds funny, but it actually does work. As soon as you suck in air, it's like you're sucking in like the aromas the flavor, in, yeah. into your palate. Like I can actually, you get like a burst of like, oh yeah, oh there's the, there it is. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's really important, more so when we get into red wines, but to get the wine all over your palate, because that's when you'll notice like the acidity and all these different parts, which we'll talk about once we drink finally. Okay. That's tasty. I accidentally swallowed. <laughs> okay, so when we're thinking about the palate, the palate is quite a bit longer. There's more stuff to talk about. The first thing we evaluate is mm. the sweetness. Mm, it's it's pretty sweet. So okay, so that's like a common misconception in tasting wine. A lot of people misinterpret fruitiness for sweetness. So this wine, like, because mm. everyone's palate is different, but generally you detect sweetness on the tip of your tongue. So, like, is the tip of your tongue, like, tingling? Like, do you feel something there? Not really. Not really, eh? Yeah. So... Let's taste it again. <laughs> oh, shucks. <laughs> you need a second opinion. Um, so I, I would say, technically speaking, this wine is dry. It's just very fruity. Oh. You right? know what? I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. So if you don't I'm notice that... Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Um, but like, I don't like generally like New Zealand, so when you're blanc, like there might be a little bit of residual sugar, but I would not say that this is a sweet wine. Technically this is still dry. Like if we, when we do port, ooh, that would be a fun, okay, we got to do the port thing for sure. But if, if we had like a sip of port right now, like that's a sweet wine and you would yes. know that. And I, I definitely get the sweetness off of port. Right. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, technically speaking, this is a dry wine, but that was one thing I struggled with a lot when I first started tasting. As I said, everything that was fruity was like sweet. And just because that's, like, that's what my mind interprets sweetness as. Yeah, I suppose a trained palate would know, like, oh, that's, like, that's more savory, that's Right, yeah. Sour, well, and that's, that's what tasting is, right? That's why we do this, because it's all about just calibrating your palate, essentially, and figuring out, like, I don't really like high acid wines, which is what we're going to talk about next. Um, so, I, like, I always think that any wine that has just a bit of acidity, I'm like, oh my gosh, that's that's really high acid and someone else is like no 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 this is actually medium so I, I had to learn that about myself that when I think something is like whoa that's quite a bit of acidity it's actually probably just medium what about when you have actual like crazy acidity wine oh that like rips my face off <laughs> that's high <laughs> then right. I know it's high all right but uh okay so we talked about sweetness um we can talk about acidity so we detect acidity obviously from your mouth watering so uh it's funny probably watching back this video, you'll notice as soon as I sipped, I was like swallowing as I'm talking, which you can probably hear on the mic. Yeah, so, it's sorry, my, everybody, but whatever. Yeah, <laughs> that's what mouth, we're doing. My mouth is salivating. Yeah. So that's high acid. So really like you look at how long after you swallow is your mouth still watering. Oh, that's there was acidity. some, there was something I saw about some wine guy being able to like spit and bring his saliva back up or something having to do with the wine. I don't know. It was really weird. I'll look it up. I'll see if I can find it. Post the link below. <laughs> yeah, if, if I find it, it'll be posted below. If I don't, I'm sorry for having said that out loud. Ugh. Yeah. No, it's a thing, though. Like, uh, one of my uh, teachers, when I first started learning, I won't give Throw her name here because it's yeah. funny, but she taught me to do, um, or a class, to do the dribble test. So, which, again, I'm not going to do right now. But so you swallow the wine, and then if you lean forward and you see how long you drool for and you literally let that's the drool fall out of your mouth. Yeah, that's a thing. Okay, I yeah, that's yeah. what it was. And then, so it's just a good way to like 
start thinking like, oh wow, there's still drool coming out of my mouth. This must be <laughs> acid wine, oh, which is kind of funny, but it's like, it's a good way to kind of learn about it. That's gross. I like it. That's yeah, fun. For sure. <laughs> and New Zealand's Sauvignon Blanc is really high acid. Like it is known for being a high acid mm-hmm. wine. Like just, which just makes it like very refreshing and easy to drink. And like, that's why you want to crush this it on a hot day on the patio. Drink. Yeah. It's yummy for mm-hmm. sure. But it, it might be problematically really drinkable. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so for other like red wines, obviously we talk about tannin. Um, and we won't really get into that. I'll get into that when we start talking about reds. But there are no tannins in white wine, so we're not going to assess okay. that. Uh, the next thing we would think about would be body. So body in wine is obviously how full it feels in your mouth. So like, does it is it mouth filling or does it feel just more kind of like it feels very light this feels very yeah, refreshing i agree yeah it just it's easy to kind of move around in your mouth mm. and that's kind of why it's important my mouth is still watering. that's why it's important to really squish it all over because i always kind of think like how easy is it moving around in my mouth does it feel full or does it feel a bit lighter and yeah i think you're right yeah, it's a pretty light-bodied wine. I, I, would I say. feel, yeah, it would, I mean, it would lean on the light if it's maybe a little more than light. Yeah, but light plus, I don't know. Yeah. But it's, yeah, it definitely doesn't have. It doesn't. It doesn't stick to anywhere in my mouth. It doesn't have like a heavy feel. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I would say light-bodied for sure. Um, yeah, so that's the palette. Like we, we generally we talk about kind of more things, but it's kind of wine nerdy. This is just the fun stuff. Um, yeah. So the last piece would be flavors. Mm. So then we talked about aromas, so then it's kind of, we need to think, so what we got on the nose, are we getting that on the palate as well? Is that typical to get the same, or is it more often you yeah, don't? no, mostly you do. And sometimes it's like, oh, I actually noticed this more on the palate than I did on the nose, and that's okay. It doesn't have to, like, pair up, but generally it does, and I think this one does too. I get a lot of that tropical fruit, definitely a herbaceous Kind of thing. One thing um, I always get in New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc, or in most Sauvignon Blanc actually, is tomato leaf. That's a very typical. I don't even know what note. that. How do you even know what that tastes like? I guess I know what it smells like. Like you know, like a tomato plant. If you like, kind of rub it and like smell, like it's like a herbaceousness kind of. I know. You've never rubbed a tomato leaf between your fingertips before. <laughs> no, that seems like a our our ad Katie. She's, uh, she apparently has rubbed a tomato. She's a sh- wow. professional chef. There you go. That's, of course uh, she has then. She knows, she knows her food translations right. on all this well, stuff. we'll have to let Katie try this after and see mm-hmm. what she thinks. But that, like, yeah, to me, that's a very classic, like, if I, because there's a lot of uh, white wines um, that are, yeah, like, high acidity, like, tropical fruit, bit of herbaceousness, but um, I guess I'm talking about tasting blind here, but if I get that tomato leaf, then I know it's Sauvignon Blanc, and I, like, that's how I nail it. Oh. And I do get that in here, but, and that's just, it's hard to... And see, I don't know what that flavor is, so I don't know how to identify it, right. but I'm going to learn. Right. Exactly. Because you're going to teach me. Exactly. Okay. But. Excellent. Yeah. Well, you like the wine? I do. I really do. Problematically so. Yeah. That's very good. Yeah. So, uh, that's it for this week on the WPG Wine Down with Alex Allardyce and myself, Mark Adams. Thank you very much for joining us, and we will see you next week. Cheers. Cheers.